often hear or read that the Constitution was drafted in the hot summer of Philadelphia in 1787, and if it's a particularly detailed description, you'll hear or read that the Constitutional Convention included delegates from 12 of the 13 states. One of the original 13 colonies become states simply and flatly refused to send delegates to Philadelphia. That state was Rhode Island. Rhode Island had a total population of under 70,000 people, uh, and it had been an obstinate confederate under the Articles of Confederation. Uh, it was Rhode Island that kept the nation from agreeing to amend the Articles in any fundamental way, most importantly, uh, um, prohibiting amendments that would have allowed, it, allowed the government to make money by including an import tax. In some ways, then, it was Rhode Island that helped to produce the impotency of the Articles of Confederation. But come the summer of 1787, Rhode Island wanted to play no part in a fundamental rewrite of the nation's constitutional order. That's not even the half of it, though. Rhode Island refused to ratify or even hold a convention to consider ratifying the proposed constitution until 1790. Uh, that was 10 months after George Washington had been inaugurated as the first president of the United States. That was almost a year after the new government had come into being. Why did it appear that Rhode Island was doomed and determined to stay out of the Federal Union? Uh, that takes a little explanation, but it's a story that's ac actually quite useful for uh, describing just how imperative it became as more and more states joined the new plan of government uh, for those who remained outside the new union to act quickly or to face a new, brutal, lonely reality outside of the new United States of America, the newly organized United States of America. After 11 states had ratified, uh, it took until November of 1789 for North Carolina to ratify the Constitution, becoming the 12th state. Uh, this is well after the new federal government was up and running. Uh, one of the not negligible factors, and there were, there were several but, uh, that I won't go into right now, uh, was that they were tired of being associated with Rhode Island. Uh, they were tired of uh, people lumping them together with the obstinate Rhode Islanders. But why were so many Rhode Islanders opposed uh, to this new proposed Constitution or after it was put into effect to this newly functioning Constitution? Uh, that takes us to uh, party politics in the, the tiny state of Rhode Island, where the country party, uh, which controlled the Rhode Island General Assembly from 1786 uh, through 1790, um, largely representing the rural and agrarian areas, uh, was steadfastly opposed to these kinds of uh, innovations and steadfastly democratic, uh, with a small d. Uh, its opposition uh, was, were those in the urban communities of, of Newport, Providence, uh, merchants, business interests, uh, but the country party represented farmers. It represented ordinary uh, men who uh, did not support a new national government because it seemed to endanger what they were doing in Rhode Island to try to protect the little guy. Uh, when the Rhode Island Assembly met in February 1788, to jump back to the days uh, when the states were still discussing and debating the Constitution, uh, they had ordered a printing of a thousand copies of this new proposed Constitution. Uh, so that Rhode Islanders could begin to read it, discuss it, debate it. Uh, but they voted down a motion to hold a convention, a uh, ratifying convention. They instead ordered a statewide referendum. Uh, and that says a lot about the country party. This was a truly democratic party. They didn't want to, um, to bring together uh, elites to discuss this. They wanted ordinary people to have a chance to voice their opinion. They ordered a statewide referendum to be held in late March. Um, it, again, as it suited their philosophy, but it also kept the elites uh, from dominating things, uh, potentially uh, from swaying votes the way they seem to have done in some of the other states, such as Massachusetts. Uh, the referendum was decisive. Rhode Islanders did not want this new constitution. 2,708 voted against, only 237 voted for, 10 to 1 roughly. Um, the opposition was primarily due uh, to issues related to paper currency and a monetary policy. Uh, a general distrust of a strong central government was part of it too, but the state of Rhode Island had a crushing debt from the Revolutionary War. Uh, interest alone, just to maintain this debt, was five times what the, state, what the budget of the state of Rhode Island had been, or the colony of Rhode Island had been, just before independence. Uh, so they had to have high taxes just to maintain uh, payments on the interest. Uh, and they had a limited money supply, and so this drove demand for paper money. And finally, in 1786, uh, just the year before, 
the uh, uh, discussions in Philadelphia of a new plan for uh, a, a new federal government, and in part because of, of these kinds of actions in states like Rhode Island. Uh, they passed a law, the country party uh, was able to push forward a law uh, to create a new state currency, and it depreciated badly. Uh, it wasn't worth very much, but it was legal tender, and so debtors were using it to pay off their debts, their private debts, uh, and, their t and, um, uh, and their taxes. And debtors, uh, ordinary people loved it, creditors, the elites, the merchants hated it. Um, and the new constitution appeared to threaten this new system. That in many ways was the point, right, was to have a constitution that would limit states from being able to um, run recklessly uh, down uh, the road uh, toward uh, paper money, um, uh, the rabble of democracy, those kinds of concerns. Uh, also, uh, to be fair, uh, there was a, uh, a less uh, selfish uh, interest of many people who were opposed to the Constitution, and that was because they, many, particularly Quakers in Rhode Island, were sure that this Constitution was protecting the vile practice of slavery and would protect it for the foreseeable future. So many Quakers were opposed uh, to the protections, particularly of the slave trade, for an extra 20 years. Um, and another uh, kind of democratic response that, that pops up in Rhode Island uh, was this concern over the strangely long terms in this new federal government. Senators for six years, uh, representatives for, for two years in Congress. Rhode Island was, was truly, truly uh, uh, radical in their democratic leanings. Uh, their lower house was elected not every year, but every six months. Every six months they were holding elections. Uh, even their upper house, their governor, was elected every year. Uh, so these uh, kind of anti-democratic innovations of the federal constitution uh, really stood out. Uh, to Rhode Islanders. So the Constitution goes into effect uh, on June 21, 1788, when New Hampshire becomes that ninth state to ratify. The government uh, is up and running by March of 1789. George Washington's inaugurated in New York in April. He visits New England. He makes a plan as the first commander in chief um, to travel to all the parts of the United States. Uh, he visits New England in October and November of 1789, and of course, avoids traveling into Rhode Island because it's not truly a part of the United States. Uh, they were disappointed, but during that time, while George Washington is traveling through New England, the Rhode Island Assembly again decided to vote against holding a ratifying convention. They clearly uh, were not moving down the road terribly quickly. After delaying a, constitution, a call for a ratifying convention 11 times, uh, the legislature finally called for a convention in South Kingston in March of 1790. They failed to reach a majority uh, to support ratification even then. This is March of 1790, and that's when the United States Senate, remember the government's up and running now in, in uh, um, uh, the uh, federal government uh, in 1790, I guess by then uh, they would have relocated to Philadelphia. The Senate decides to pass a law, uh, pass a bill uh, to be approved by the House, um, but the Senate uh, acts quickly. Uh, by May of 1790, they pass a bill to prohibit all trade with Rhode Island uh, by land or sea. Uh, they demanded Rhode Island pay back its share of the national debt, uh, the old government's debt. And leading men in Newport and Providence began discussing seceding from the rest of Rhode Island. <laughs> that is tiny Rhode Island breaking apart um, to join the, the United States of America. And at that point, uh, finally, a 12th call uh, for a convention is made. Uh, another convention is uh, held in Newport, uh, in May of 1790, and the Constitution there is narrowly passed, 34 to 32. Uh, several anti-federalists absented themselves, couldn't bring themselves to vote for it, but realized that uh, this was going to happen. Uh, Governor John Collins of Rhode Island decided to support the Constitution. Uh, he was vo voted out of office not long after. Um, Rhode Island grudgingly and slowly uh, became the last of the original 13 states to ratify the Constitution. And ultimately, that last state ratified it by the narrowest margin of any state. On August 31st, 1790, the state's first representative to Congress shows up, Benjamin Bourne, arrives in Philadelphia. So finally, by the last day of August, 1790, representatives from all 13 colonies become states are uh, gathered together in this new United States of America. All in all, the ratification process from the day after the convention uh, in Philadelphia uh, decided to adjourn, uh, when September 18th, Pennsylvania delegates began discussing, uh, calling for a ratifying convention there, all the way through to 1790. 
Uh, this is a heavily debated, heavily contingent process. Uh, there's many opportunities for everything to go awry, and in fact, many discussions uh, and debates that took place over those couple of years that uh, people may have kind of vaguely foreseen in 1787, but these, these uh, philosophies, these debates, these discussions begin to really take on new energy and, and new life, and, and ultimately it helps to produce the energy for uh, ratifying a Bill of Rights under the first Federal Congress. But tiny Rhode Island didn't even attend the convention uh, and refused adamantly to participate in this new government, was ultimately compelled by the sheer fear of loneliness, of, of being left alone on the Atlantic seaboard uh, to join ranks in the new United States of America. And only in August of 1790 were all 13 states finally together. Thank you. Freedom 101 is made possible by generous support from the University of Oklahoma Alumni Association. Freedom 101 is a program of the Institute for the American Constitutional Heritage at the University of Oklahoma. For more videos and podcasts, visit freedom.ou.edu.